Welcome back from the break. You're watching Breakfast at Dawn. Okay, now, uh, Cyril, I want to start off with a comment that's yeah. uh, come in on uh, Twitter from Girish Malia, who says, uh, there's a question for Cyril, is there any realistic chance of the Indo-Pak dialogue starting anytime soon? You've kind of already answered that, but if you could specifically, very briefly. Um, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's brief enough. Mm. <laughs> okay, from A. Gundes, is or would Pakistan be ready to give up its claim over the Indian Kashmir in exchange for a permanent settlement? Oh, wow. Yeah, I think Musharraf came pretty close to that. Um, I think there's a realization on Pakistan's side that line of control with a little bit of adjustments here and there and some kind of joint administrative setup is the way ahead. Uh, I don't think we can get anything more out of Kashmir. Okay. All right. Now, Sana Salim says, will diplomatic ties actually start being based on real issues now rather than cultural exchange events? Where do we stand there? Well, Mumbai was pretty real. So, yeah. I mean, that's the basis of what, what's causing the tension right now underlying uh, it. So, I think, uh, you know, obviously they tried this thing through the composite dialogue, this people-to-people -people contacts, and, and they were very popular on both sides of the border. They tried in Kashmir to less so popular because of domestic uh, or in local reasons out there. But um, it's the way ahead. I mean, you know, if, if people are meeting, uh, professionals are meeting, leaders are meeting, track to diplomacy, all of that kind of stuff is going on. Let it happen, let it create, let's see what it throws up organically. Um, it doesn't make sense for us to be disconnected. I mean, as Prime Minister Manmohan Singh said, uh, you can't wish away your neighbors. And we're here in this neighborhood and we're stuck together. Let's do that. We are. Shobhs uh, wrote in asking, can you bring up the issue of India and sponsored terrorist activities in Balochistan? Why does India accuse us of terror when we do the same? I think that question's been answered. We've talked about Balochistan extensively. Faisal Kapadia asked, please ask whose interest is it in if we keep fighting? Is it the West or is it the Pakistani and Indian armies? Wow. I, I mean, yeah, okay, that's a simplistic <laughs> way of looking at it. I, I don't think the two armies are, are necessarily wanting to fight. I think there's a historical reasons also added into the mix. It's really, you know, you, you've seen this happen in other parts of the world with long-running conflicts and disagreements where sometimes people have even forgotten what they're fighting about, but they do remember that they're supposed to fight. So I think that <laughs> might be some of the... The, the things that are feeding the issues out here. Okay, now in, re in reference to that, I have right. a question huh. uh, as well. We were just talking about, you know, before we went on the break, so Hasni Hender also brought up Holbrook. Yeah. And, uh, you know, his statement is that, uh, well, you know, there's been no evidence on Balochistan. So what's going on there? Well, I mean, okay, I, I think she was absolutely right in mentioning in, in Manmohan Singh's speech in the Lok Sabha. He specifically said, look, uh, if we don't talk, then we'll have to talk directly. We'll have to talk to third parties. He didn't mention any countries by name, but I think it was pretty obvious that he's talking about the U.S. Um, there is a lot of pressure, uh, no doubt. I mean, uh, you know, President Obama had made that clear early on, even before he became president, that he saw the solution of Afghanistan being a regional solution and that included ties between India and Pakistan being improved. So we're seeing some of that American pressure yielding some concessions from India and yielding some concessions from Pakistan. Let's also not forget that, well, if, uh, you know, India accepted or let this uh, word Balochistan creep into the statement, Pakistan at the same time has gone ahead and said, look, uh, LET was involved in Mumbai. This is what happened. Uh, you know, we haven't really tried to hide the fact. Is that really just us wanting to do it or is it also external pressure on us to uh, hold up our clean hands? So I think there's a little bit of pressure on both. It really... The, the point is, which side of the fence are you on? And I don't mean India-Pakistan, but really in terms of, look, it's, it's um, July 2009, almost August 2009. What do we want to see a year from now, three years from now? You know, this is the government out there. There's a new government in India. There's a relatively young government in Pakistan. And they both seem to want a better tie. So can they make it work? And the window of opportunity for these things tend to be small. Right. Okay. Then I have Sarah Niazi who says, uh, you know, in reference to all these articles that we've been reading in the papers and analysis pieces, yeah. major policy shift on India's part, shouldn't we take it with a pinch of salt? I don't know. I don't believe in... Uh, that kind of skepticism. Maybe there is a major shift. Okay, um, a major policy shift. I think it's inevitable that they have to talk to us. Um, right. It's really they're trying to set the parameters of how that discussion goes ahead. So they're trying to say, look, 
you guys will be on the back foot and we'll be on the front foot and we're going to constantly accuse you of being terrorists and ask the victims of terrorism. And so they're trying to change the, the framework of the dialogue itself uh, or how it's perceived. But uh, the f underlying fact is at the end of the day, if not today, if not tomorrow, if not six months down the road, they have to talk to us again because there are basic issues that entwine these two countries. And um, there's international interest in us talking. There's domestic interests and there are domestic compulsions which are besides people actually wanting to. We, you know, we, we share this long border, there are these two armies, there's nuclear weapons, there's water issues, there's trade issues, there's regional issues, there's SARC. Um, you know, we can't get away from not talking no, to each other. No, we can't. Not at this point. Okay, Cyril, we've run out of time. I just want to read out, though, some of the questions that did come in, and we weren't able to have you answer. Omar Khan says, do you really think India's nuclear submarine purchase is Pakistan-centric? Well, Indians insist it's about China, and Pakistan doesn't even really figure anymore. And uh, then we have Fahim Zahid, who says, it's good to hear um, uh, Manmohan Singh say that Pakistan is a nuclear state, so dialogue is the only option. Wouldn't this be counted as a success? So that's probably a reference to the nuclear deterrent, right? And Ashwitsky says, Manmohan Singh wasn't convincing at all, and he will remain under pressure for a long time now. This comes from India, clearly. Eratica91 says, he is facing a lot of flack for his statesmanship. I feel this is our last chance to resolve the crisis under Manmohan Singh. And finally, on a positive note, I'm going to end this. Sana from Karachi says, I think we should drop the skepticism and take this step positively. It's nice to have some initiative. I like that. I do too. It's true. Right? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, he's trying something. Let's, let's give him, if not the Absolutely. benefit of the doubt, let's be behind him because it, it helps us. Absolutely. Thanks you so know. much for coming here this Good morning. Good to be here. Sarah Almeida there, columnist. His, uh, Article is opinion piece is in Dawn today and it will also be on Dawn.com so you should have a read of that when you can. And it is now time for us to take a quick break. Still to come, kids are glued to their TVs. Everywhere on the telly you see violence. What is it doing to this generation? Let's ask a couple of pediatricians. Stay with us here on Breakfast at Dawn.